Hi, I'm Brandon. Hi, I'm Jacob. Hi, I'm Alicia, and the title of our group project is The Fall of the Branch Davidians. So our call is the Branch Davidians, one of many groups continuing the work of Victor Hutef, a Bulgarian that immigrated to the U.S. and joined the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The Seventh-day Adventist Church is a Protestant church that was founded in May 22, uh, 1863, and can be distinguished by its belief that Saturday is the seventh day of the week. The leader of the Branch Davidians was David Koresh, a self-proclaimed Messiah who used the Bible and scriptures to control and manipulate people. But the founder was Benjamin Roden, who founded the cult in 1955 in the Mount Carmel Center in Waco, Texas. The group believed that they were living in the times of final judgment by God and that Jesus will return once the group reached the highest level of moral maturity. David had many spiritual wives from the group who he believed he was the perfect male for. David Koresh was also a control freak. The content of what he was putting on the group was what they wore, how they thought, and what they ate. No sugar, no processed flour, and they couldn't eat dairy products because they were made from milk, which is baby food. All around, he's an autocratic leader, which is a leader who controls and dominates their group and has no care about the input or opinion of anyone else in the group, which is exactly what David Koresh does. According to Kendra Cherry, a psychologist that has been doing that for over a decade now, um, the concept of an autocratic is to make fast decisions for the group that may usually end up being beneficial but hurts the morale of the group and leaves them feeling like they have no input or control over anything in the group. Also, according to Anastasia Belli, in 2016, main autocratic characteristics are not letting the group have any input and the leader is in charge of the rules, methods, processes the team uses to reach its objectives, which is also what David Koresh did with the Branch Davidians. He was a self-proclaimed messiah whose actions eventually led to the fall of the Branch Davidians. We'll be discussing Tuckman's five-phase model with the Branch Davidians. Um, so we're starting off with forming. Forming is when the group meets together, and in this case with the Branch Davidians, um, it was recruitment. David Koresh's method to recruiting his followers were using the Bible against them and persuading them with Bible verses and also recruiting young women to use for his own personal use to make them his spiritual wives. <clears throat> so the Branch Davidians came to be in 1955 by Ben Roden. They're branched out from the Davidians, a small movement that was developed in 1929 by Victor T. We're moving on to Stormy. Storming is when the group needs to make decisions together because there's um, been tension that has occurred in the group. But in this case, the group rarely had conflict, but there was a time when a few ex-group members felt uncomfortable when they were asked about how they felt about David Koresh sleeping with underage teenagers who he considered as his spiritual wives. Like I mentioned before, for recruitment, this was David's method to recruiting young women into the group. And for, I mean, as it is, I mean, it, it is wrong to sleep with underage women, but at the time, the group members didn't really speak on the action that he was doing. They just kind of went along with it and I would say dismissed it. But we are now moving on to norming, and norming is when the group reaches cohesion. And at this stage, the Branch Davidians began to follow Koresh's rules to the absolute. Group members followed in his footsteps and believed that he was the next messiah. They praised him and held him on a pedestal. So, again, recruiting, lured them in, made them believe all of this crazy stuff, and now they're all in agreement with one another, and he's getting that sense of personal pleasure from having that attraction to the groups. He feels that he feels superior knowing that he has people who are following after him and leading by what he's telling them to do. Um, moving on to performing. Performing is when the task is accomplished. And, and yeah. so from the outside looking in, the people who were not a part of the Branch Davidians, they saw 
that the group was moving in a way that was um, to them seemed like it was leading to a, a, a righteous path of love and religion and they wanted to, to be a part of that movement. So, of course, they ended up joining. Um, people saw the Branch Davidians as a cult who were extreme worshippers of God and wanted to be a part of a movement that seemed to be heading down a path of love and religion, like I mentioned before. At this stage, David Koresh was able to recruit more people and have them join the Branch Davidians. And again, he persuaded them with Bible verses, and to him that was his biggest, I would say his biggest weapon. That's the best I can describe it. The final stage is adjoining, and that's when the task is met and accomplished. And in this case, it was met, but it wasn't met in a, in a way that um, you would expect it to. So fortunately, his madness was put to an end. In February of 1993, ATF agents in Texas filed for a, warning, a warrant, but decided to act without it. They raided Mount Arno, and a fire broke out that destroyed the compound and killed the majority of his followers. Those who survived were arrested and given lengthy sentences for their actions. So 25 other survivors who still believe that David was in the right state of mind and wanted to pursue in his footsteps, um, published his writings and rebuilt the Branch Davidians, but there has been no word on the new, the new movement. And that is to conclude the Fence by Faith model of the Branch Davidians. When it came to decision making, the Branch Davidians often had a lot of conviction and believed that doomsday was around the corner. Conviction is a firmly held belief or opinion. This led them to make very irrational decisions for David Koresh. Koresh, the leader of the Branch Davidians, was an authoritarian leader. He believed that he was the son of God and was sent to earth to prepare for doomsday. Because everyone in the group saw Koresh as a messiah, this led the group to make decisions by minority rule, and Koresh made all of the decisions. Janja Lalich, a professor in cult studies at the California State University of Chico, said, First and foremost, probably every cult leader is a narcissist. When it came to the Branch Davidians, this meant that most of the decisions were made for the benefit of David Koresh. He, believed, he often told people how to live their lives in every aspect. Some of the rules Koresh gave were weird or did not make much sense. sense. For example, he didn't like people combining food. They couldn't have dairy and they couldn't have sugar. I believe one of the major reasons members followed Koresh was because of social influence and conformity. This led them to make very poor decisions like like child abuse and polygamy with minors. In the article Science, Human Body and Mind by the BBC.UK, it states that when someone is in distress and there is a large group watching, a diffusion of responsibility occurs. People are paralyzed into inaction because everyone assumes that someone else will go to the person's assistance. When it came to the Branch Davidians, Although some found these practices strange, because of conformity, no one ever questioned David Koresh. The worst decision the Branch Davidians made was getting into a more than 50-day shootout with the police. This police raid was later named the AFT Raid, which ended in the death of 80 Branch Davidian members. Each aspect of our cult is important in telling its story. By combining our concepts and views together and from the research that we've gained, we learned a lot about the Branch Davidians. The Branch Davidians was a religious group led by David, David Koresh. He believed that he was a messiah who was sent to do God's work and recruit followers to lead by him and his groups. The Branch Davidians, led by their misguided conviction, often made irrational decisions on behalf of their authoritarian leader, David Koresh. Members within the group 
followed Koresh, believing he had absolute authority over them. This social influence to conform to Koresh's power led them to making rash decisions like giving their kids to him for marriage or to punish. The group think within the group led them to their worst decision, which was the AFT raid of February 1993, where members got into a shootout with the police, ending in the death of 80 Branch Davidian members. From each aspect of our topics of the group, we have learned the importance of what not to do in a group where other lives, mental health, and families are at stake. Although being an autocratic leader is good in some cases, in this situation, it was not because of the brainwash he did to the people of Branch Davidians. We have learned that if we were leaders, we would be democratic leaders because we want the opinions of our people and to hear what they have to say about certain aspects of the group and situations that they don't like or necessarily feel comfortable with. 